I've played through 2017's Prey twice now, and it's still one of my favorite games of all time. It has a very engaging and addicting gameplay loop and top-notch world building, but both times when I've completed the game, I just kind of feel nothing in particular, except for the desire for more gameplay. In neither playthrough did I give even the slightest shit about the moral, interpersonal, or survival consequences the game attempts to put forth. It all functions as mostly an effective backdrop, and I think that's it for me because there's a strange disconnect between the game's attempt with the post credit scene to paint the narrative itself as having been a nuanced and immersive moral puzzle about empathy, and the fact that most of the NPCs are just kind of annoying and whiny. They feel mostly like caricatures to me, to the point where it really seems like a purposeful, stylistic choice to make them so. There's also simply not enough information given about the effectiveness of your decided method to deal with the Typhon. Blow it up, wave it up, run away. It's all very broad in its implications. And then on top of that, you have the late game revolution, revelation that William Yu is willing to let his children be collateral damage to cover up the mess on the station, which seems like it should be leading to some sort of confrontation, but doesn't. So in my opinion, these issues kind of work in tandem to make Prey's ending feel a bit awkward and lackluster. I've seen some criticism that largely revolves around dislike of the it was all a dream ending, but I don't think that's the core issue here. I think the problem is that Prey splits, splits, splits itself in too many different directions by the end. It ramps you up with anticipation at potentially taking on familial and or corporate corruption, which never happens. It wants you to feel the weight of deciding on survival versus progress. It wants you to feel the human cost of all this as well, but none of these individual elements are sharp enough on their own. And so when I get to the twist ending, I haven't connected enough with the people on the station or been given enough information to make an effective or meaningful administrative or even self-interested decision. And so because of a plot revelation made late in the game and without enough preface, I feel like I haven't completed a fully satisfying arc for my character. Even if only this last criteria had been fulfilled, it would have worked in making the post credit sequence feel less like it was all a dream and more of a cool, thought-provoking cherry on top of the cake. Going back to characterization, too much of the game's tone comes across as purposefully unrealistic, as caricatured and often a bit silly, but not quite verging on full-on cartoony like We Happy Few, the employees of the station, who are meant to be uh, at the top of their respective fields, are usually kind of whiny babies who don't have a good grasp of their emotions, with some just being insane, evil, or possessed, or worse, forgettable. The only reliable exception of this is Alex Yu, who's by far the most nuanced character in the game. The only trick the writers seem to have to engage player empathy at all is when dealing with dying, hurt, or critically endangered characters, either in person or via recorded messages. And even then, you don't spend enough time with any one of them. The few characters you do spend any time with, it's rarely face-to-face, -face, and usually they just talk at you and tell you to do stuff for them. There's There are no dialogue choices, so your interactions are limited to what the people on board Talos 1 generally think of Morgan Yu, how Morgan is perceived. You don't have any means of inquiry or influence on an interpersonal level with the NPCs. They're information delivery systems. I can only guess as to why any of this is. It seems to me that the characters, as presented in the game, were, represent were representative of the intended tone of the game from the start. I just don't know how they were ever meant I just don't know how they ever meant for that to connect to the reverential tone and theme of the ending. The game isn't about empathy. It's a survival power fantasy. If anything, the natural reaction is to just club everyone and everything on Talos one over the head with a wrench. And after Alex pulls off your VR headset, he would sigh a relief and tell you, "Yeah, our coworkers are real jackasses." You made the right decision, Morgan. I, I mean, Mr. Typhon, sir. 
I'm really just guessing here, but I think they ran out of time and money, like every immersive sim does, and then just attempted to cap off the incomplete final act with a theme that you were never really made aware of. Because that wasn't the point of the game. The point of the game is that everything is a poten potential tool of survival. The game doesn't force you to rely on others, or even require you to beyond a necessity to, pro to progress from one section to the next, like human door locks. Empathy is a kind of emotional cooperation. It causes you to see how easily you could be in the same situation someone else finds themselves in, and thus often results in you offering something of yours for them or for the common good. Prey doesn't set this up because Prey is a giant obstacle course and was clearly designed to be such. It's not a stage for contemplation, and that's fine. I love the game. The ending is just an odd, wet blanket. Side tangent, I've seen another reviewer try to explain away inconsistencies and criticisms of the game's latter half and ending by claiming that it's cosmic horror. It's not. Lovecraft isn't just big scary thing from out there that's inevitable and pointless to resist. Cosmic horror, even in the broad sense, has specific storytelling conventions that mostly revolve around the anticipation of said entity, or the aftermath of an individual searching for said entity and its psychological impl implications. If Prey is cosmic horror, then so are Mass Effect 2 and 3.